Hey, my name is Ben. Thanks for stopping by. Today we're going to be talking about uh, troubleshooting a loose connection or a loose electrical connection in an HVAC system. And the symptoms that we're experiencing here are that the thermostat keeps losing power. And we know that because the thermostat that's installed here is a Nest thermostat, which uh, uses power stealing and or the common wire to get its battery charged up and make it operate properly. Now, if you had a thermostat that had batteries in it, uh, you may not notice anything at the thermostat itself, but you may notice that the equipment is just not working even though the thermostat says that it is. Uh, so sometimes when we have intermittent issues like this where we're completely losing power, and what I'm gonna do here in a minute is we're gonna actually look downstairs first and I'll show you, uh, we're, we're in an attic by the way in case you didn't notice. Uh, but I'm gonna show you how to check for power on the thermostat terminals uh, and that's what ultimately led me to be up where I am now. So I'll show you what the problem was here really quick and uh, then hang on and we'll uh, talk about how to check it at the thermostat uh, in just a minute. Now obviously before you go looking in your HVAC equipment you're gonna wanna make sure you disconnect power or if you're gonna work with the power on make sure you know what you're doing because there is 120 volts high voltage sometimes 240 volts. Be really careful don't do this unless you feel comfortable doing so. These intermittent issues can be really difficult to troubleshoot and that's why I just wanted to kind of point out a few things to look for uh, in your furnace itself. So uh, right now the power is turned on. Typically there will be a switch adjacent to your equipment. Uh, this equipment is pretty old. You're not going to see this exact setup, uh, but this, the concept still applies. So we follow our uh, main power wires coming in here and uh, you can see that they're spliced right here. These are the connections that are the field installation connections. Uh, the rest of the connections inside of most furnaces are done at the factory. So these ones are oftentimes the most suspect for having issues. Now if we look closely at this wire nut right here, uh, what I noticed right away is that there was some discoloring happening on the insulation of the wire that goes to the actual equipment. Now I'm going to turn this thing off again here and I'll just take this off so you can see uh, that we have it fixed now. So when I first looked at this thing, that uh, stranded wire was wrapped around the solid one, but it wasn't really engaging in the threads of the wire nut. And that's a problem because uh, if you don't get the threads of the wire nut around both conductors, oftentimes it'll be still wrapped around there, uh, but it won't be actually making a proper connection. And when you see signs of heating on your conductor or on the insulation next to it, you know that there was a little bit of arcing that was occurring. So what alerted me to this right away was that as I pulled the cover off of this electrical compartment, uh, it right away, uh, the power actually came back onto the system and I was getting voltage at my thermostat terminals. And we're gonna talk about that some more here too. I'll show you down on the actual thermostat how we can check if there's power coming in uh, to that thermostat. And that's gonna be one of the more important or easier troubleshooting steps uh, before you necessarily look into what's actually happening at the equipment. Now that we're here though, I will just show you that we have voltage now uh, at our uh, thermostat terminals. So our terminals are exterior on this particular one. These will normally be mounted on your control board or something similar. Now we're gonna check between the R and the common. So R and the C, they will typically be marked, which is typically going to be the red wire and the blue wire. We're testing in volts alternating current, and you can see that we do have 30 volts showing right there. Uh, normally it'll be closer to 28 volts, but 30 is still fine. So we're getting proper voltage coming out of our unit now, and we know that uh, we have power to this system. So everything should actually fire up just fine now. I'm gonna put this cover back on there, and then I'll see you guys downstairs in a minute once I make my way back through the attic and down through the access hole and over to the thermostat. Here we are at the thermostat. You can see we've got our uh, electrical meter set to volts alternating current. 
I'll link to this uh, electrical tester in case you guys are looking for a good general purpose electrical tester. Uh, but anyway, uh, what we're looking at here on the thermostat, you can see we have our RGY. WC. Real quick, I'll run through what their purposes are. The R is our 24 volts coming from the therm from the equipment transformer. Uh, so that should be 24 volts. We measured it upstairs. It was 30 volts. Uh, and then it's gonna, the thermostat is going to take power from the R and apply it to these other terminals to basically make the system work. So from the R to the G is going to bring on a fan. R to the W1 typically is going to bring on your heating and then R to the Y is going to bring on your air conditioning. So the common wire here is actually just basically like a neutral um, and that is going to allow the thermostat to draw power from this uh, power supply on the R without turning on any equipment. Now the Nest can do power stealing so even if you don't have a common wire the Nest will still work by applying a tiny bit of current from the R to the G to the Y to the W uh, all at the same time, but not enough current to where it'll actually bring the equipment on. You can see right here, uh, the Nest thermostat even tells you what all those different terminals are for. The power, the fan, the cool, the heat, and our 24 volt common. Okay, so we're going to test the voltage now that you kind of understand the basics with that. Uh, like we said, the R is going to be our 24 volts or 20 or 30 volts in this case is what it's actually putting out. And if we check from the R to the common, you can see we're getting that same 30 volts that we were getting upstairs. So that means that we have power to the thermostat and therefore the thermostat should now be able to function properly by taking the power from the R and applying it to the different terminals. Now you can also measure uh, power, typically anyway, from the R to your other wires as well. See if I can get it there. 30 volts from the R to the G. The reason we can sense power from the R to the G is that there's a relay that is basically a big coil of wire, or a tiny coil of wire, uh, that is going to allow power to pass through to here. Well, it's actually the other side of the common. If we measure from the G to the common right now, there should be no difference because essentially these are the same thing right now. You can see the difference is basically nothing. So if you don't have your common wire, which is fairly common to not have a common, uh, then you can measure from the R to the G or the Y or the W, and you should still be able to sense whether or not you have power at your at the location where you're testing. Uh, if that doesn't work for some reason, you can also check from the R to ground. Uh, like if you had the metal frame of uh, an electrical box nearby, you could check from the R to ground. Let's say that the screw went to an electrical box uh, that was metal. We would be able to see uh, voltage there. So just another way to check it just in case you run into that. So now that we have power, let's go ahead and take our thermostat, stick that back on the wall. I believe it was totally dead, but now that there's power here, it should come on and start to charge. Now that that loose connection has been repaired up at the equipment, we restored power to our thermostat and we verified that with our electric meter. Uh, this system should be good to go. We'll test it to make sure that it's all working properly. So hopefully that gave you a good idea of what to look for for a loose connection and also just for testing for voltage at your thermostat. Uh, if you want to keep troubleshooting though, I'll put a couple of videos here on the screen and we can continue to work through figuring out what's going on on your, uh, your system. Uh, in just a few seconds. So go ahead and click on one of these videos and we'll see you over there. I don't know where you guys are from, but uh, in our area, southwest Minnesota, this sound coming from that huge flock of birds up there is one of the most identifying sounds of spring and it's amazing. They're so noisy!